Hello, my name is Captain Ollie Davis and I'm currently a platoon commander at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. This presentation of around 10 minutes will cover the basics of mission analysis, a tool that is taught here to, uh, to officer cadets uh, and acts as a foundation for their future military careers. Analysing what you've been told to do can help you understand and prioritise tasks and also improve the performance and consistency of a team within a changing environment. The process covered in this presentation and the evidence of thought it creates can aid in developing leaders' decision-making confidence. Before looking at mission analysis, it is important to understand where in the military planning process it falls. The combat estimate, as shown on the slide, is a decision-making tool that enables people to make timely and appropriate decisions. It is used by the British Army at all levels to deal with a wide range of tasks, from operational planning to assisting civil authorities. It is important to note, however, it is a dynamic process rather than linear, that places importance on the decision made by a leader rather than the process being adhered to rigidly. And as with all skills and techniques, it is improved when practiced. The framework you can see on the screen can be used at a lower level with individuals using it to plan uh, department level problems up to a division size, roughly equivalent to a hospital trust, where at this level, a team working through a planning timeline of up to several days. We teach this process to all officer cadets here at Sandhurst which acts as a foundation they will build upon during their respective careers. The seven questions, albeit with a short preparation question at the start, you see on the slide, are the same questions posed at all those before mentioned levels. They encourage a quick understanding of a situation and analysis of the possible solutions. In this presentation, however, we'll be focusing on the second question. What is the situation and how does it affect me? Analyzing your task is a crucial part of the process. By understanding what it is your boss your boss wishes to achieve and what you've been ordered to do gives you a clear picture of your part in the wider plan and the part required by you and your team. By having a consistently clear analytical process when facing problems and having to make decisions, those around you will learn to understand the outputs required and react more effectively and efficiently to your direction. Question two is the process that allows leaders to develop an understanding of their role in achieving their boss's desired outcome. It also encourages identifying both specified and implied tasks and the factors that may constrain decision, decision making. Question two is complete when you have a full understanding of the outcome to be achieved, the objectives and tasks necessary to fulfil your boss's direction and a firm grasp of what freedoms, constraints and risks apply. You'll gain an understanding of what further decisions are required by whom as the situation progresses. As you can see on the screen, Question two can be broken down into four distinct sub-questions. The top row of circles are the four sub-questions involved, with the second row below offering another way of thinking and looking at the questions being asked. For example, question 2.4, how might the situation change, is simply another way, another way of analysing the level of risk involved at different points of a plan. Who might be responsible for them and how they could be mitigated? To assist us with answering question two, we use the three column format, as you can see on the screen. This is designed to help break down factors or tasks given to you by your boss, analyze these tasks using the wider knowledge you have of the situation, or to create an output that helps solve any issues faced. A question endlessly asked of cadets here at Sandhurst when practicing this process is so what? Put simply, what does the information you have mean? By repeating the so what question, it forces you to identify additional details and therefore gain a deeper understanding of, of a problem or task. An example of this tool can be seen on the slide. The three column format shown is being used to break down the boss's intent. In this simple example, the leader has ordered, ordered us to support friendly forces whilst they conduct a block to the north. Now please don't worry too much about the understanding of these terms in an army context. The first order analysis of this task, support, is that they require a resupply. And by feeding that information back to the process, you can see that additional thinking is required to solve that task. They need a resupply, but what equipment do they require? How much of it? Where can they safely collect it? And can I transport it? This has then created further tasks, action and analysis into the output column. On the slide, you can see the output liaise with friendly forces has been fed back through, uh, fed back through to the first column to provide further analysis to ensure all possible outputs are captured. This can continue with all direction and tasks given to you. 
It will also highlight implied tasks that fall out of the output column. A three column format is beneficial in a number of ways. As highlighted, it can aid breaking down a problem set into tangible outputs. It can also build confidence in a leader's decision making by acting as a record of their thought process. It allows easy changes to be made, should the situation require it, and can be easily understood by others. You'll have heard me mention specified and implied tasks during the last few minutes, and I think it worthwhile clarifying the distinction. A specified task is defined as something we've been told to do, such as resupply friendly forces. During the analysis of the task, it is crucial that all specified tasks are captured. You must ensure you are clear as to what you're required to achieve, and therefore what you must do to ensure success. Clearly, communication both up and down is, is crucial, as mis misunderstanding something can easily undermine the outcome. It is often possible to conduct further analysis of your specified tasks to develop an understanding of what is fully required of you and your team. And by feeding these specified tasks into whatever your analysis tool is, in this case, the three column format, you will discover a number of implied tasks that are uncovered that you are also required to achieve. A useful checklist can be to ask yourself the following questions. What must I do to achieve the objective? What must I do concurrently? What must I do after? What must I do to support others? And what do I need others to do for me? The three column format can be used for a wide variety of tasks and problems, not just military operations. To prove this, we often find it helps to pose a simpler and more relatable problem to, to officer cadets and ask them to use the combat estimate and three column format to solve it. Planning us out with friends works well helping them understand specified and implied tasks, freedoms, constraints and risks, which they can then apply back to a military context. In the lower part of the slide on screen, where we use food shopping as a more relatable problem, I'll leave it up to you to include who the boss may be in your circumstance. A factor in this example could be that the weather forecast is predicting hot weather, so a barbecue seemed a good option. A task that is then highlighted is to purchase barbecue relevant food and drinks. There is a planning guidance highlighted preferring a particular supermarket for burgers. However, a risk has to be identified that good weather and well cooked food might attract additional forces. As highlighted previously, so what is asked of these outputs? and they can be fed back into the tool, providing a clear and logical understanding of the task. Murphy's law is typically stated as anything that can go wrong will. It is therefore necessary to identify risks and plan for their occurrence. During question one of the combat estimate, both the enemy's most likely and most dangerous course of actions will have been determined. In non-military scenarios, this can be related, related to risk. What is the most likely risk to occur and what is the risk factor that would have the highest impact? Typically, military missions are planned against the most likely, but then tested or wargamed later in the planning process against the most dangerous slash highest impact. This is a crucial phase of planning where each potential plan is tested with a series of what ifs that helpfully highlight previously hidden flaws. Using our simple barbecue example on the screen, a highest impact factor could be what if the weather turns? And a possible solution to this is to move inside, which opens up possible additional issues of seating, laying a second table, or simply just having an umbrella ready next to the barbecue. Just as when a mission is analysed, risks and what ifs can be scrutinised by using the three corner format to understand the potential solutions. In summary, I hope you have found what I've had to say of some utility. It is important to note that mission analysis forms just a part of the analytical process used in the British Army, but it is one that is key in ensuring all members of an, of an organisation understand what it is they're trying to achieve, how they might go about it, and what it looks like when they are there. I wish you all the best in the future. Goodbye.